Hello everyone, my name is Abdul al Asad. I'm a medical student at King Saud bin Abdulaziz University for Health Sciences, and today we're going to talk about sexual transmitted diseases, or STDs in short. Now, this is a very broad and important subject, but today we're going to focus on the most common organisms and diseases. So, here are the things we're going to talk about for today. Uh, you, what you see in blue is diseases caused by bacteria, and what you see in green is the diseases caused by viruses. The last one, T. vaginalis, is actually a protozoa. And I know the first question one might ask when he sees a slide, what's the most common organism out of all of these? What's the most common STD? Okay, and the answer is genital warts caused by HPV, which is human papillomavirus. Okay, so now let's go deep into each organism. Now, so let's start with gonorrhea. Okay, so gonorrhea is a gram-negative intracellular diplococ diplococci, okay, caused by complement deficiency. The disease is com uh, caused by complement deficiency. So complement mechanism is one of the mechanism mechanisms of our immune system, okay? And so once we have a deficiency or something wrong in that system, which is a complement system, then we're going to have an infection of the gonor uh, with gonorrhea. So, in men, it causes urethritis, most two important symptoms are painful urination and purulent discharge. In women, they're asymptomatic, usually asymptomatic. However, they can have urethritis. Even it might go even up deeper into cervix, infect the cervix, and might go and go on and, and, and cause PID, which is pelvic inflammatory disease. There's also another kind of uh, way that gonorrhea attacks the human body, which is disseminated gonococcal infection. Now, what does that mean, disseminated? Disseminated means spreading around. It goes everywhere, okay? Well, not everywhere, but it spreads around more than just our urogenital tract. So it might affect the joints, causing arthritis. It, goes, it might affect, infect the heart, causing endocarditis, and things like that. Over here is a point, 50% of patients will also be infected with chlamydia. This is a very important note coming you'll find how, uh, why it's important when we talk about the treatment. So, diagnosis. Now we have, first of all, gram stain, which is uh, gram negative, okay? And here we have culture on Thyre Martin medium. Now this is a very important point, Thyre Martin medium. Why? Because Thyre Martin medium is specific to Neisseria. So if an exam question comes in and says, you're a medical student, you enter into a lab and you find a plate, that's labeled Thyre Martin medium. Which organism is most likely being cultured on this plate? The answer is Neisseria. Okay. Treatment, we have ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Ceftriaxone to treat the gonorrhea. The azithromycin is to treat the chlamydia. We said they both come together. Now, that, why that, now that's why it's important to know that they come together because our treatment, it affects our treatment. So ceftriaxone for gonorrhea, azithromycin for chlamydia. Neisseria can be transmitted from mother to fetus and might cause blindness. Also, chlamydia can do the same thing, can be transmitted from mother to fetus and also cause blindness. The good news about that is that they're both treated with erythromycin eye drops. The fetus, we give them, uh, once they're born, we give them erythromycin eye drops. Now, over here is a slide, what you see on the microscope. Now, let me just put on the pen over here and show you what's going on. Now, let's focus here on this big cell over here. What is this cell? This is a polymorphonuclear leukocyte, okay? And we said gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci, okay? So what does diplococci mean? Diplo means double. Cocci means berries, so double berries. What you see here, these little guys over here, that's the double berries inside the cell, okay? Double berries. They can be inside the cell or even outside the cell, okay? You see them over here, okay? Inside or outside. So these are the diplococci. So you're going to have polymorphonuclear leukocytes with intra or extra diplococci. Now, let's talk about chlamydia. So chl chlamydia is caused by chlamydia trachomatis, most common bacterial STD. So if we're talking only about bacteria, chlamydia comes on the top of the list. It's the most common bacterial STD. Does not have a peptidoglycan layer. Why is that important? Because some drugs, for example penicillin, attack the peptidoglycan layer. So since chlamydia doesn't have that layer, then penicillin won't do anything to the chlamydia. Okay? There, it's, uh, chlamydia is immune to penicillin. Has something called the elementary body and the initial body, which is basically uh, how the chlamydia looks throughout its life. 
let, let me explain this. So initial body is basically when the chlamydia is inside the cell and it's replicating, 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 replicating. And once it wants to leave the cell and go jump, jump on and attack another cell, it has to, during the transport from one cell to another, it has to protect itself from getting killed or getting attacked. So it turns into something called the elementary body, which is basically uh, more stronger uh, than the initial body. It's like a rock, okay? So during the transport, it won't get killed. So it turns into something very stiff, very strong, so it won't get killed during the transport. Okay? Affect squamo, columnar, and columnar epithelial cells. What does that remind us? The cervix. Okay? It reminds us much of the cervix. Most common organism to cause NGU. NGU is non-gonococcal urethritis. Sometimes they uh, categorize urethritis based on non-gonococcal and gonococcal. So when we talk about non-gonococcal urethritis, there are many organisms. On the top of the list comes chlamydia. Okay? The cervix is a frequent site of infection, can progress to pelvic inflammatory disease, okay? So also, pelvic inflammatory disease can be caused by either by chlamydia or gonorrhea. Diagnosis, once you see the gram stain, once you put it under gram stain or under a microscope, what, what we find is we're going to find polymorphonuclear leukocytes, but no diplococci. So once you see there's no diplococci, we're, we're dealing with a non-gonococcal urethritis, okay? But the most preferred tests by many institutions to check for chlamydia is PCR. Treatment, like gonorrhea, ceftriaxone for gonorrhea, azithromycin for chlamydia. Now, PID. We said PID a lot, which is pelvic inflammatory disease. What does that mean? It means infection of the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. Symptoms are abnormal vaginal discharge, abnormal menstrual bleeding, dyspareunia, which means pain during sexual intercourse, and lower abdominal pain. Why is this in red? For two reasons. Number one, it is the most common symptom. Number two, the lower abdominal pain is so severe that patients will start to move in a way where they don't move their abdomen because any movement of their abdomen will cause pain. So the patient will present in your office walking strangely or walking weird. So that's what we call a PID shuffle, okay, because they're trying not to move their abdomen. What you see here is chandelier sign is once, once you're doing an examination, once the doctor, the physician has uh, his two fingers inside the vagina and, try, and doing his examination, uh, you're going to find s the female will be so sensitive that any kind of movement will cause so severe pain that she might jump from her place and reach the chandelier as a uh, expression, you know, phrase of expression, okay? So, let's jump to our next subject, syphilis, okay? So, caused by triponema pallidum, okay? There's four stages to syphilis. Primary syphilis, painless chancre, which is what you see here, okay? Painless chancre. It's very important to know that it's painless because there's another STD that caused painful chancre, which is Haemophilus ducreae. Okay? Haemophilus ducreae. So, chancre is like one lesion. Okay? There's only one. There's not, you're not, you're not going to find uh, like all around the mouth. or It's just one lesion. Okay? After that, it might develop into secondary syphilis. It will develop into secondary syphilis, causing widespread rash is what you see here. Okay? This rash... You also remember, it's never vesicular, unless it's congenital syphilis, unless their mother gave, this, mother gave her son the fetus syphilis. In that case, it might get, it might, the, the widespread rash might be vesicular. Other than that, it's never vesicular. Okay? And another part of uh, secondary syphilis is condyloma latum, is what you see over here. Okay? It is wart-like wart lesions, okay? wart-like lesions on, in the scrotum and at the vagina. Why is it there? Because uh, these lesions like moisture and humidity. That's where you're going to find them. Those are the locations. Scrotum and vagina is where you find those two things, humidity and moisture. These are extremely infectious, okay? Extremely infectious. Now, I would just want, to, uh, want you to remember something. There's two things when you hear condyloma. There's condyloma latum which is uh, associated with syphilis, and there's condyloma acuminata, which is genital warts, which we said is caused by HPV, okay? So condyloma latum, syphilis, condyloma acuminata, HPV, okay? Put that in mind. Now, latent syphilis, which means symptoms resolve, okay? And most patients will stay in this phase, the latent syphilis. 20, about 25% will go into tertiary syphilis, which is specific to a couple of symptoms. First of them is gummatous syphilis. What does that mean, gummatous syphilis? Which basically is granuloma tissue 
in the bone and skin, which will then turn into fibrous tissue. Now, how, how do you remember this? There's an easy way to remember this. Instead of gumma to syphilis, just imagine gummy bears in your bone and skin. Okay, so replace gummatus with gummy bears. Uh, and there's cardiovascular syphilis. Okay, it will affect the cardiovascular uh, system. Now, uh, this is uh, cardiovascular syphilis. What you, what you need to know, it's not treatable by, by, with drugs. So once you give the treatment, it's not going to affect the cardiovascular, unlike the gummatus syphilis, which can be treated with medication. Neurosyphilis, well, the syphilis will attack the neuro, neuro, nervous system in many ways. We don't want to go to get into that. We, say, we see here up of, I wrote, I wrote rule of six. What does that mean, rule of six? It's a way to memorize uh, syphilis. Basically, the primary syphilis, or, or once you get exposed to the organism, it takes six weeks for incubation. Okay? Then, you're going to get uh, the painless chancre. The painless chancre needs six weeks to heal. Okay, after six weeks, after the six weeks uh, of the chancre healed, so let's say the chancre already got healed, so after we wait another six weeks, then we're going to get secondary syphilis. Okay, secondary syphilis lasts for another six weeks. Okay, then after that, we're going to we're going to enter the latent phase. Sixty-six percent of people in the latent phase will stay in the latent phase. The rest will go into tertiary syphilis. Okay, and of course, you uh, you take about six years to develop tertiary syphilis. Now, here, syphilis, congenital syphilis has a high morta mortality rate, okay, it kills fast. Diagnos diagnosis, hel helical shaped organisms moving in a corkscrew fashion under dark field. Now, there are two things you need to know. Number one, we don't look at syphilis under a normal microscope. It has to be dark field, okay? Second thing, you're going to find them moving in a corkscrew fashion, okay? That's very important. As you see here in this slide over here, the picture under down, okay, these are the organisms. Helical shape, you'll find them moving in a corkscrew kind of fashion under a dark field microscope, okay? Treatment, although syphilis is very, uh, very important, uh, very strong organism, it can be killed easily by penicillin, can also treat congenital syphilis, Okay, if you give it to a mother who has syphilis and she's pregnant, it also can, can treat the congenital syphilis. If patient is allergic to penicillin, what do you give? Erythromycin or doxycycline? Now, what's this star about doxycycline? It's a note. Now, you have to remember, doxycycline, you never give it to a pregnant woman. It is highly teratogenic. Okay? So, if a question comes in, 30-year-old pregnant female who has syphilis, okay, and is allergic to penicillin, okay, which drug is completely contraindicated. You have to, it's contraindicated, doxycycline, because it is teratogenic. Okay? Herpes, caused by herpes viridae. There are three rules you need to know about herpes, characterized by latent phase. Okay? It's latent state. So, where does it, where does it, where does it, where does it go in, during that latent state? Basically, it goes to the dorsal root ganglia. You need to remember, remember that. It's very important. It jumps and hides in the dorsal root ganglion. And hides there. Okay. Another rule: subfamily alpha, which HSV one and two uh, are un uh, go under, uh, are named under. They cause multinucleated giant cells with intranuclear inclusion bodies. Okay. The herpes are held at bay by the cell mediated immune response. So the cell mediated immune response that's what's holding them back from infecting the or doing, you know the entire infection. Now, there are many types of herpes viruses, okay, as you can see here, there are many types. I don't want you to memorize all of them, let's just memorize some of them, okay? So HSV1 and HSV2 are very important. How to memorize which one is which? HSV1, above the waist, HSV2, below the waist. So genital herpes, which is below the waist, usually, usually HSV2, okay? Then we have HSV4, or Epstein-Barr virus, Remember, Epstein Barr virus. This is a cause of Burkitt's lymphoma. Burkitt's lymphoma, okay? You also have HSV8 causing Kaposi sarcoma. Okay? This is very important to know. HSV5 cytomegalovirus, this is only attacks once you have an immunocompromised, usually immunocompromised patients, okay? Now, let's jump into the next slide. Herpes, transmission occurs by direct inoculation of mucocutaneous surface. There's a lot of kinds of ways herpes might present. So, gingivostomatitis, infection of the, the gums in the mouth, okay? Genital herpes, might be HSV1 or HSV2, but we said mostly HSV2 since it's below the waist. 
herpa- herpatic keratitis, which is infection of in the eye, and uh, you know, mostly this is very, very, very much you can find in the U.S. Okay, one of the leading causes is herpes. The leading causes of blindness, of corneal blindness in the U.S. is by herp- herpetic keratitis. Herpetic Whitlow, which basically is the infection of the finger. Now, this was a very big problem before the creation of gloves. Before the medical uh, doctors and uh, students used gloves, Herpetic Whitlow used to spread, uh, you know, like virus. Well, it is a virus. Disseminated herpes. Disseminated goes, uh, we said disseminated means spreads around. Okay. Encephalitis, HSV-1. HSV-1 is the, one of the most, in the U.S., is the most common cause of viral encephalitis. Okay, so that's very important. Treated with acyclovir, okay, which is antiviral. What does ac- how does acyclovir attack? And it inhibits thymidine kinase. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Genital warts. Now, thing you need to know, very important. Once you, once you, hear, it, once you, once you hear the word warts, Always remember HPV. Okay. Once you hear the word warts, HPV. Okay. We have the rule of O. O for circular double stranded DNA. That's what human papillomavirus is. O for round warts, as you can see here. Basically, a couple of O's going on. O for round cervix. Okay. Exposure to HPV can can give you cervical dysplasia, and that can develop that can develop into carcinoma. Okay. So, HPV, there's a lot of kinds of HPV, but I don't want you to memorize all of them. I just want to memorize these four. Type 6 and 11 are usually associated with genital warts. Type 16 and 18, cervical cancer, okay? Usually cervical cancer. Now, HPV, pap smear, used to detect early dysplastic cellular changes. This is one of the most important tests you'll ever hear in your life. Okay, pap smear. We do this actually since then since we're talking about dysplastic cellular changes which can develop into cancer, this is done on a regular basis, okay? Uh to certain uh, to certain women. We're going we're not going to go through the rules of pap smear and when to do it and when, uh, when not to do it, but you know, go on and read more about that. Treatment warts can be removed using cryotherapy, which is basically very cold lithium, okay? And last but not least, vaccines. Since we said we need to memorize 16 and 18, 6, 11, thank God we have vaccines for both of them, okay? 16 and 18, 6 and 11, okay? Both have vaccines for that, okay? So now, this over here is pap smear, okay? Here's the, here's the thing, uh, here's the doctor trying to get some of the cells once we and by rotating inside the cervix. Once we got that, just put them on a slide and check if I need plastic features. Now, Jumping to the next, HIV, caused by HIV type 1 human retrovirus. So number one, it's a retrovirus. Virus attaches to the surface of CD4 lymphocytes. Okay. This receptor over here, CCR5. Okay. This receptor is on uh, dendritic cells and whatnot. If someone is deficient, he doesn't have CCR5, he cannot get HIV. He can't get infected with HIV. He can give it to other people, but he can't get infected himself. Okay. So, there are stages. Primary infection, you're going to have fever, lymphadenopathy, and lethargy. Asymptomatic patients, after that you're going to have an asymptomatic patient, which is the next stage after that. After primary infection, you're going to have an asymptomatic patient. This is the longest phase. It can last from four to seven years. Then you're going to have, to have, then you're going to have a symptomatic HIV infection, which you're going to have infections all around, you know, fever, constitutional symptoms like fever, night sweats, and whatnot, lymphadenopathy, white plaques in the in the mouth and things like that okay after that you're going to have aids okay once aids attacks there's three things you need to buy aids number one cd4 which is cd4 lymphocytes the, the count is below 200 okay and what, what what's going to happen opportunistic infections are going to jump in and start to cause trouble and also malignancies okay opportunistic infections like what we mentioned in herpes which is CMV, cytomegalovirus, okay? That's, what was, that's one of the opportunistic infections that might attack during AIDS, okay? And just another thing, once we have opportunistic infections and malignancies, they're going to attack a lot of, a lot of parts of our bodies, for example, the heart, the, the, the lungs, the liver, and whatnot. The lungs, which you need to know, is very important because it might cause pneumonia, which is the number one cause of death in patients with HIV or AIDS. 
Now, diagnosis, we have an Elijah test, okay? And if that is negative, then basically it's very, 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 very unlikely that the patient has HIV. But if it's positive, we do a Western blood test for confirmation, okay? Treatment, antiretroviral, antiretroviral. When do we give this? If patient is symptomatic or asymptomatic with CD4 count below 500, okay? And what's very important, for the patient has to take the uh, the drug we, we need as much compliance as possible because any kind of slip any kind of uh, forgetting about the drug it can cause you know uh, the drug to get immunity and uh, you know not working anymore okay so last organism t vaginalis caused by trichomonas vaginalis it's an anaerobe okay infect sites covered by squamous cells okay like what so in men we're going to have the urethra will be infected, and females, the vagina, okay? It won't go above more than that, okay? It's usually, uh, usually uh, localized in that region. Females, presentation, itching, burning on urination, and copious vaginal secretions, okay? Examination, thin, watery, frothy, and malodorous discharge. This is what, this is what I need you to focus on, malodor malodorous, which basically means bad smell. It's going to have a really bad smell, okay? Men, usually asymptomatic, okay? So if you remember, in gonorrhea, we had men with symptoms and females are asymptomatic. In T. vaginalis, it's the other way around. Men are asymptomatic and females have symptoms, okay? So diagnosis, microscopic examination of vaginal discharge on a wet mount preparation. I showed you here on the pictures on the side, how do you do a wet mount? So basically, you take some of the discharge, you put it under, under the glass piece, and then you look under the microscope. That's what they call a wet mount, okay? Examination of, uh, of the urine may also reveal trichomonas vaginalis organisms, okay? The treatment, we treat with metronidazole, okay? So, here are the references that I used in this slides. Clinical microbiology made ridiculously simple. This I highly recommend this book, okay? It's very, very, very useful book. Okay, all the tricks that I told you about uh, the rule of six for, uh, for syphilis and uh, how to remember gummitus as gummy bears and things like that, all got from clinical microbiology. Step up to medicine, also very important, very, very helpful during the clinical years, and it covers a lot of uh, the main uh, points where doctors might ask questions. For example, most common symptom, most common disease, and things like that. Okay, that's all, the, that's all the time I have. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions or comments, here how, these are the ways you can reach me. And thank you very much.